I think a lot of people, when they first look at the court cards, maybe they have a little bit of difficulty understanding them. That happens with me. Sometimes, even still today, with the court cards, I have trouble getting the meaning. It's gotten a lot better as I've been applying my prior knowledge to just the experience in, experiences in my life to the court cards and really thinking about them in terms of just the things that I've gone through and just applying it to life. It really does help me a lot. Instead of looking at them as standalone cards and just looking at the image you know, in and of itself. So for today, I'm going to be doing what I usually do, and I'm comparing the Page of Swords to um, Germanium, which is number 32 on the periodic table. So first of all, I'm going to be looking at um, RWS. And for this card, it's just a, simply a person holding a sword, and they're looking away confidently towards one direction, there's a lot of air, a lot because swords are about air. They look youthful. They have a lot of energy. So this card traditionally is about communication. It's about the mind. It's about also about integrity, about honor, about ambition, desire, thirst, hunger for knowledge, hunger for experience. It's like someone coming out of college and landing that job and then all of a sudden they're very, they want to rise up in the ranks. It's that sort of energy that brings something new, something fresh to the table. A new, a new employee trying to, to prove themselves or prove their point to the company. And the story of Germanium deals with that, I think, in a very interesting way. It really does tie into it. The energy of Germanium really does fit in the description of the Page of Swords. And I'll get into that, but first let's just take a look at a few other cards here. So we have from Steampunk Tarot. Again, that confident, youthful energy. And then from Modern Spellcasters, same thing. Look at that confidence. They're holding this huge sword almost overconfident or overambitious. So it's that balance also between ambition, that balance between ambition and desire and your integrity, your honor, because you could take things too far. It's do you consider all of the, the consequences of your action or are you going to be too thirsty, too hungry to really care about the consequences? That, the way it could affect other people. Even in the Thoth deck, very similar. This one has a lot more energy, a lot more chaos, a lot more things going on, but still that person with the sword heading off to take on some challenge. So that leads me to the story of Germanium. It's number 32 on the periodic table, and this is, the, this is the, the element that lines up with the Page of Swords. And this element, its story is deeply involved with communication. It is one of those elements that we use pretty much 80% for communication, for in fiber optic cables, in our cell phones, uh, computer chips. And the story behind the first integrated chip, the integrated microchip, or integrated circuit, circuit or microchip is a story of ambition, a story of moving up and being successful. So there was this guy, this guy named Jack Kilby, and he was hired by Texas Instruments to solve a problem. They had this major problem called the tyranny of numbers. And what was happening is Texas Instrument was spending a lot of money hiring a lot of people to make chips, microchips. Now these were not really integrated. These were just microchips where they were soldering silicon, silicon wire together, and it took a lot of people to solder this together. Lots of people packed in rooms with hazmat suits on, soldering together these wires, and they were very unreliable, and this was very expensive to the company. 
So they hired this guy and they said, well, how can we solve this problem? What can you come up with to solve this for us so that we can be more cost productive? And so they hired him in June of 1958. That month goes by and he isn't having much success. And he's, he has this huge desire because he came from a much smaller company. And so he had this desire to be successful, this desire to, to really prove himself. But after that first month, he began to get a little bit discouraged, but he didn't give up. He didn't give up. And there was a mandatory vacation in July, which I, the book that I read um, that covered this had said that it was a mandatory vacation. Now, I don't know why a vacation has to be mandatory. I think that they should just call it a vacation. I, I mean, I guess there are some people that just would really want to stay. I don't understand that, but I'm kind of getting off track here. But yeah, why? But it was a mandatory vacation. And so he's sitting there at his desk. Everybody goes on vacation. He could not go because he was not at the company long enough. So he's sitting there by himself at his desk and he's trying to think of how to solve this problem. So he comes up with the idea of instead of using silicon, he decided to use germanium, which was a very good choice and worked really well. And nowadays we use silicon, but I'm gonna get back to that in just a moment. So he used germanium and instead of soldering this thing together, he took a piece of germanium and he sculpted it into one piece. One piece that he could fit into a circuit that he could make into a circuit. It was an integrated circuit, so a one solid circuit. And because of this, it wasn't, the soldering wasn't coming apart and it was just much more stable. So he solved the problem. And unfortunately, all the people that went on vacation, they ended up going on vacation permanently because he, while he was, while they were on vacation, he was working to, I guess they didn't know this, pretty much get rid of their job. And he did that. Now, the thing about this is, even though he was ambitious, even though he was determined, he had a lot of integrity and a lot of honor. And he wrote the patent for this, but someone else came along and they wrote a better pattern. They stole his idea. They stole his idea and they worded it in a way that made more sense. They were kind of a little bit better with words. And they ended up getting credit for his discovery for years. It wasn't until I think the 90s when he was finally given the Nobel Prize. But the thing about it is he didn't really become bitter. It didn't destroy him. It was something that empowered him to go on and do more things and just to become better. And the message here about that is sometimes we do things in life and we may not get noticed for it. We may not get famous for it. We may not get the recognition that we deserve. We deserve. But if we're passionate about, about something and we're ambitious enough about something, we can still have, we can still do those things regardless. We don't have to give up on those desires, even though someone may have less integrity and less honor and less respect. We can still do what we need to do. Now, I'm not saying that you should just let someone step over you and take your inventions and your, your ideas. That's not the case. But it didn't destroy him. It didn't, he didn't spiral down and become depressed like some other scientists did when people took their work. He continued to work and did other things and made other accomplishments. And he still was a successful scientist and researcher. And he changed the world. He changed the world and, you know, some of those things, some of the things that you do that mean the most are the things that you do when people are not watching or the things that you do when people don't really know what goes on behind the scenes. A lot of times people will gravitate towards something because it's grandiose, because it's something spectacular or because somebody presents something in a really flashy way. But then the people giving actual knowledge, giving actual information, they overlook that because it might be done in a way that they don't feel is wrapped in a nice enough package. Or maybe that person isn't quite, you know, the, the image that they would like. And so germanium is tied with communication. It's in, it's in our telephone wires, fiber optic cables, and it's something that 
I think really does carry that energy of the Page of Swords. It's a messenger. It's been the messenger of the century. And I think that that is something that can't be overlooked when it comes to the connection between these two. So I wanted to point that out. Now, the next thing that I want to talk about is some of the astrology behind germanium and the page of swords so the page of swords is when you look at the pages they don't really correspond to one planet in one sign now i did not come up with one particular crystal that i thought really embodied this so that embodied all of this so i focused on pisces and the reason why i focused on pisces was because it has the association with neptune and germanium was going to be named neptunium because that was the planet that was um, in the in the spotlight at that time neptune and but the problem was they had already named the planet Nep uh, an element neptune neptunium so the name was taken by another element so they couldn't name it that but i think it's interesting so that so the guy just decided to name it after germany but i think it's interesting that they were going to pick neptunium because i think that the energy of this card really does encompass Neptune's energy. And the element that I did pick, which doesn't have all of those signs in it, but does have Pisces. So it's Pisces and Earth. So it's Argon Argarine. I think that's how you say it. A-E-G-I-R-I-N-E. -E. Now, this is a really interesting element when you look at the information from the Encyclopedia, Encyclopedia of Crystals. So I just want to read some of the information here about it. So um, this stone helps you see the bigger picture to assist in healing relationship problems or overcoming grief and of separation. It protects against electronic incursions of an old, uh, of an old love, empowering the quest for your true self and the ability to do what is needed from the heart. I love that part. And I think that the page of source is about your true self. You know, what are you really about? What would you really do under certain circumstances if you desire something? That determines who you truly are. Are you cutthroat? Or are you honest? And also the ability to do what is needed from the heart. So you're going to do what's needed from the heart, not in a ruthless kind of way. So from your heart, what's in your heart? What's your heart telling you? And so it encourages following your own truth without conforming to group pressure. So do what you want because you love it, not because you want to, not because you're pressured to do things in a certain way, to go a certain way because someone says you should do this or you should do that, right? And I think that the lesson that these two that this card holds in combination with germanium is just that it's just that it's about being yourself no matter what and balancing out that ambition and that desire and holding true to your integrity so before i go i just wanted to say one more thing about germanium and i wanted to talk about its properties and it's just its crystal form so so not, not combined with any other elements, but germanium as a metal forms crystals. And these metallic crystals, they have some properties that people have been using for holistic, pur holistic purposes and you know, making bracelets and things out of them. It's a, a rejuvenating energy, like making something more youthful, bringing back youthful energy or youthful physical um, physical properties to something. So I think that fits in with the page because usually there's a youthful energy to the page, the pages. And also, um, when I read the information on this, the information on germanium said that it was a, a, a very useful aid in being successful, accomplishing goals, following your, your path and your desires. So it really did, that energy really did match up with what I, what I felt the energy of the Page of Swords was. So once again, I am not disappointed by the pattern that I see 
when I pull these cards and I compare them in order to the elements that I feel they correspond to in that order. So thank you guys so much for watching. I will be doing an update video soon, so stay tuned for that. And I appreciate all of the love that you guys have shown me. I will definitely be back really soon. And, um, you know, love you guys and just continue to be the best that you can be. And you're doing an amazing job out there, all of you guys, and everything that you do. I'm, I'm still watching and still comment, commenting here and there. And um, I'm still a part of all this. I'm doing an update video, so you'll find out, you know, kind of why I haven't made any videos in a little while. And so, yeah. So I will see you guys really soon. My name is Will. This is Atypical Tarot. See you next time. Bye.